the first lecture for week three again we are running somewhat behind schedule but uh, we'll see how to to manage it um, so this lecture is about inheritance and <coughs> data hiding so let us first try to understand the idea of inheritance so assume that you want to make a pizza at home right um, you can do that we have tried it at home during the lockdown period and we know that it is possible so the way to do that the simplest way to do that is that you can go and buy a pizza base from the market so you can get that in the market they'll uh, they'll put the pizza base in some kind of uh, plastic covering and uh, you can buy it directly and i think it works for uh, four or five days of two up to up to a week right you can you can keep it at your home and then you can use it to make your own pizza right and uh, <coughs> in order to do that you also need some other ingredients um, there is apparently a pizza sauce um, you can buy some cheese and uh, then that that's pretty pretty much it right i mean considering that uh, you want to make a very basic pizza and not something uh, really extravagant so then in order to cook this pizza what you'll have to do is something like this you take the pizza base you apply the pizza sauce all over it um, you grate some cheese over it and add the toppings of whatever your choice is right you can you can put tomatoes onions capsicum paneer whatever you want and then you can cook this this base in an in an oven right there are some uh, temperatures and everything that you'll need to know but uh, this is the idea you can also cook it on a i think on a on a basic tawa <laughs> but uh, yeah it's good if you have an oven so now <coughs> assume that there are two sets of people in your house right let us say you and your sibling and you like different types of toppings on this pizza right um, so for example you would like onions and tomatoes while um, your sibling would like say paneer and and capsicum um, so so you are going to basically build two pizzas to make two pizzas right but you can understand that there are some processes here which are basically exactly the same right so you getting the pizza base um, getting the pizza sauce getting the cheese then um, applying the pizza uh, applying the sauce over the pizza base and grating the cheese up to this point it's basically common right and, and after that you can put um, onions and tomatoes on your pizza and your sibling can put uh, paneer and capsicum and then you can bake them both right whatever it is so essentially um, if you see the whole process um, th there is there are certain things which are common right the pizza base the pizza sauce the cheese and only the onion and tomato and the paneer and capsicum are really changing right and this in some ways is also applicable or or it's also seen in uh, the world of software engineering and, and and when we build systems you'll realize that there will be many elements which are going to be common uh, in let us say two different products that you are going to have a look at and uh, it often makes sense to you know just just do that once and then reuse it right in some ways so uh, in other words the whole process can you can you can basically say can be abstracted at different levels so that you have some common elements and from from at at you know after reaching one particular stage you can have a bifurcation or trifurcation or, or you know an n way split whatever it is but but you can always find um, things which are common till a particular uh, till a particular level so this is the whole overall idea of inheritance that you are trying to build stuff in a hierarchical fashion and uh, you basically start with some common elements and then you try to diversify it later uh, in such a way that you can build two or more different systems so this is the overall idea of inheritance so um, we often start with something which is really generic a generic entity let us call it <coughs> in most cases we this, this these entities are actually classes right so you already know what a class is what an object is so we are now uh, you know whenever i say entity for now just assume that we are talking about classes it can actually be extended to uh, you know packages and other things but in this particular course we are basically looking at inheritance from the perspective of classes and objects so so you start with a generic class and you keep on extending it as and when required when i mean extending it means that you have all the basic properties and basically you keep on uh, adding more over it so it's like the pizza base so the pizza base is there you add the pizza sauce you add the cheese then you add 
some toppings and basically so so you are actually adding more and more layers over the same common pizza base so that is the the overall idea so um, the the actual thing that we do when we use this kind of a system to uh, to build some stuff uh, is that uh, we start with a class which has some some very common attributes which are going to be uh, you know applicable across a large uh, domain right so so we are going to start with things which are absolutely basic absolutely necessary and then at each level we basically specialize this generalized version into a slightly more specific uh, form right and if we keep on doing this right if we keep on doing this in a hierarchical fashion we'll end up with an entity a class which has all the required properties to represent my real world and uh, it has been done in a hierarchical fashion so uh, i can choose any of these levels in this hierarchy and then do a bifurcation a trifurcation you know a split from there itself so this is the overall idea and this whole phenomenon is known as inheritance so you start with a particular class you add some properties to it then you inherit it you create another class and um, then you you basically add more properties to this new class so the the class which was inherited is known as the base class whereas those which are going to inherit it and extend it are are uh, known as derived classes so this is a very uh, you know simple example the th the same pizza example if you try to uh, see it from the perspective of inheritance then essentially you can say that um, there is probably a class of all wheat based dishes you know the the dishes which require you to have let us say wheat flour and then from there you can you can basically say i can either create a pizza from this uh, you know or i can create noodles from from the wheat flour so basically um, let us say the wheat based dishes have some property and what is the property that the main ingredient is wheat now there are there is a bifurcation here pizza and noodles so they are be, i'm saying that they are both going to be based on wheat and then there is another level here which i say that now pizza could either be an onion and tomato pizza or it could be a paneer and capsicum pizza and a noodles could also be the let's say instant noodles or or those uh, you know those noodles which require some some amount of time you have to boil them and then put them in a different fashion i i don't really uh, i'm not really a great cook but uh, yeah i know that the instant noodles the maggi kind of noodles that we eat um, they are known as instant noodles and then uh, in general when we talk about noodles it's there there's basically a way to do that so anyhow so the the overall idea is to understand that there is a hierarchy here right that uh, we start with things which are absolutely generic or general in nature and as we keep on moving down um, these things become more and more specific and the idea here is uh, whatever is there at at a lower level it basically inherits it basically borrows properties of everything that is there at the higher level so basically paneer and capsicum pizza is a type of pizza and it is also a type of wheat based dish that is the overall idea so um, we can we can also see these derived classes as specializations of their base classes that they, that the base classes is a generalized version of the uh, derived classes this this is another way to look at it whether you are looking at it from top to down top to bottom or bottom to uh, top now one of the idea whenever you are going to use inheritance in um, in in designing your system is that uh, what exactly should be the features that uh, that should be visible to the outside world whenever you create a class right now i don't know whether uh, these things are there in your memory it's it's been a few weeks but uh, when we when we started with some of the c++ examples if you if you remember we had those private and public Uh, sections right of 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 uh, uh, of members so we are we are somewhere in that direction that that essentially what should be private what should be public don't worry we'll we'll look at what what are these uh, these private and public things in probably the next lecture but uh, for now the idea is whenever you create a class it is really important to figure out um, what should be visible to the outside world okay so for example um, when when i really uh, when i go and buy the pizza base uh, I, i don't think the pizza 
base maker is going to give me a, a note a label which basically tells me the recipe of how the pizza base was made right i, I don't need to know the recipe uh, i just need to use the pizza base that's it right so it's it's a detail which i really don't don't require no because i am going to use the pizza base uh, i don't require to know i'm not required to know each and every detail as long as uh, it, my purpose is solved uh, i don't need to know the details so this is something that that will be there whenever you are creating classes as well sometimes when you will create a class uh, there will be some behavior which uh, which you, which, is, which is really not of any concern to the outside world okay the outside world would only use your class uh, it will create an object and then um, you know use the object but exactly how are the the uh, operations being performed within the class probably you don't really need to expose that um, Another issue that that you should know is that uh, whenever you are going to allow some kind of inheritance, so whenever the class is available uh, to be to be extended, for example, I'm calling the word extended, even though uh, it's probably not right to use it. Uh, it's it's more from the Java terminology, but the idea is that uh, whenever a class is going to be a base class for other classes, um, should it really allow? all things to be customized by the derived classes that is the overall idea or should it actually hide certain types of uh, uh, properties should it actually ban modification to certain behaviors right uh, for example uh, is it possible to uh, bring a pizza base at my home and then turn it into noodles for example maybe the pizza base manufacturer uh, can actually put certain ingredients in it so that uh, if i try to make noodles out of it i will i will fail miserably that is the idea so um, it is possible that uh, even when a particular class is going to be a base class uh, the derived classes might not be able to modify certain behavior of its parent right uh, because that is maybe maybe that is a part of the parent's identity so uh, these decisions can actually seriously impact the use of inheritance because if you if the base class is too restrictive it doesn't allow modifications to its behavior then its use also becomes restrictive at the same time if it is too permissive you know you you basically uh, allow a lot of modifications in the derived classes then the identity of the base class itself might be lost right so basically you are essentially uh, uh, selling people pizza bases but if if it is so easy to convert pizza bases into noodles then maybe you know you are not really serving the purpose so there is something known as the open closed principle um, it's a very old principle um, but it says software entities like classes modules functions etc uh, should be open for extension but closed for modification so what exactly does it mean right i mean it's it, it could be a bit confusing when you read it for the first time uh, open for extension but closed for modification so what exactly is the difference here between modification and extension so in if you go back to our uh, our pizza case right uh, if you the pizza base that you bought if it is possible to somehow repurpose it into noodles then basically this is the example of modification that you bought an act, uh, you bought an entity and then um, you know you you derived it and then you have basically changed everything from the parent and now the you it's it's even hard to uh, determine that uh, you know which was the parent for this derived entity so in such cases you are basically allowing modification of the behavior of the parent uh, the base class as as we we, we call it and uh, if this modification is not allowed then you can say that uh, modification has been restricted um and now the the ext the example of extension is that you basically use the pizza base as it is and then you start applying sauce and and, and cheese over it right on top of it so this is where you are going to extend it right that the pizza base was a very simple entity but now by adding things over it you are now going to create a pizza out of it right so this is an example of extension so in a sense uh, inheritance should really be uh, you know it's it, it's it's basically about uh, turning general entities into specific entities right uh, but at the same time those general entities should not lose their identity right and this is why this whole hierarchy is important it, you cannot simply have any base class and any derived class there has to be a a logical relationship between a base class and its derived classes it should be in the real world it should be like this that the derived classes are essentially 
the specializations of the general classes of the of the base classes otherwise you are just trying to uh, complicate stuff and and you're just trying to make it far more difficult to comprehend <coughs> so let's take another inheritance example just to make you uh, understand how we actually use inheritance in in uh, designing systems so most of you might actually be aware of cricket even if you are not a cricket fan i know that we live in a kind of a country where uh, uh, you know at least basic <laughs> cricket knowledge will be available to almost everyone even if you don't watch cricket so just to to, to remind you there are three types of cricket formats in which cricket is played uh, test matches uh, one day internationals and t20 so test matches are those which run for five days uh, odis run for the whole day one full day i mean it it it, it i think it starts at uh, if it starts at uh, 9 am in the morn in the morning uh, i guess the the typical amount of time is eight hours or so so basically it starts in the morning and goes up to evening and t20s are i think like four hours or so so uh, these are three formats in which cricket is played so let us just assume that we are now trying to to come up with a new cricket format okay it's called let us say t10 where you are basically uh, which is the 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 duration of let us say a t10 would probably be half the time of a t20 there will be like 10 overs in each innings now <coughs> i want to create a class okay which which represents a t10 match okay so what are the what are some of the things that i would probably need to store there i need to store the the result of the toss i mean of course uh, uh, I, I i of course I'll, I'll actually i should start with the name of the two teams of course and uh, the details of the two teams the playing 11 and everything and then uh, at the start of the match there will be a toss you know whomsoever wins the toss we the, that that team decides who's going to bat first and who's going to field first and uh, then i'll need to store the scorecard for the first innings and then the scorecard for the second innings and based on that i'll know that which is the winning team so i'll probably need to store the name of the winning team as well so this is a very simple example of this this class the t10 cricket match class um by the way uh, here here i am actually using two uh, classes and there is a class there is a case of nesting i think i showed you how nesting works in the first week uh, we created probably a structure and then we we used that structure inside another structure as a member variable and then i guess we used it in a class as well something like that so that is that is exactly what is happening here that that innings and team are are essentially other classes and we are going to have their objects as part of let us say the t10 cricket match class and uh, now here if you see that except for the scorecard right the scorecard which will be for 10 overs only uh, all the other things are are actually applicable to any cricket match right you have uh, you have playing 11s you have a toss you have a winning team St in, probably in test matches you don't have any uh, sometimes but uh, in odis usually you have a winning team uh, so this is this this, this information is actually common to all cricket matches it's not something that is specific to t10 so we can actually create the same uh, kind of a, of a class uh, using a hierarchical uh, approach where i say there is a class called cricket match and these properties which are essentially common to all cricket matches can be put in this cricket match class and then i say it is it is inherited by another class called t10 cricket match and then i just add the the part that is not there which is that is not there here right so this is the specific part and actually this is probably not the right way the the scorecards should uh, are also a part of all cricket matches but what differs probably is this number 2 right um, in a t10 cricket match there will be only two innings and each innings will be of 10 overs each something like that so but so so, so for now just assume that uh, the cricket match did not have this this scores uh, attribute so we are going to add it in the in the t10 cricket match class so this is the same thing as this this i mean these two are actually equivalent is just that this one is using inheritance now <coughs> let's let's also go and talk about some some you know methods still now we only talked about fields right so um, inheriting fields is in some way a very straightforward idea so you say that this is uh, a kind of data that uh, that is common to multiple forms of cricket matches so let us just abstract it to one higher level and then inherit it at a lower level <coughs> similar to fields um, you also have these methods right the functions which are going to be the part of a class right so for instance let us say we need to add a function called flip the coin 
and flip the coin is what really it is the it is the toss part in the match and uh, this me method basically imitates the toss at the start of the match um, so what really what what really these methods do is they actually change the states of particular objects right whenever you call a particular method on a particular object it's in general it is expected to uh, make some kind of a state change so here for example the state change will be something like this uh, before calling flip the coin the toss variable the toss field will be set to let us say null uh, if you remember null is basically a kind of uh, indicator that this doesn't have any value at uh, you know whatsoever and then uh, once the toss has been done it will basically uh, uh, point to the team which actually won it right um, <coughs> there we could also we, we may also need another method called add scores which is basically where you add a scorecard for a particular cricket inning and uh, uh, again the, the the state of the object changes in the beginning the uh, the you know the scores field is basically null then uh, uh, it, uh, at that particular time it is pointing to two null elements right because it's an array so uh, when you add the first inning scorecard um, this becomes not null and then over a period of time once the second inning also ends you basically add the second inning scorecard as well so this is like the, you know these, these are the methods which are going to change the state of your object so now again here uh, we again have two options right you can you can simply add this here like this you know when you whenever we are not using inheritance or you can see that um, the toss part is applicable as i said right to all matches so you can add the method here in the in the cricket match class and then this math method which is specific for uh, for the the t10 cricket match um, actually it is not really specific for but for now we are assuming it is um, you can add this method here so similar to the fields uh, you also inherit methods that is the idea that uh, it's not just the data but the operations also are inherited whenever you are using inheritance <coughs> Now there is there is another issue whenever you are going to use inheritance and uh, we first talked about what should be uh, open for modification what should be open for extension um, so the same idea is here that you know what members of a class should be visible to the derived class and what members should not be visible to the derived class so uh, it's going to be a difficult uh, decision to, to to give you a kind of rule of thumb um, uh, but basically the the general uh, guidelines that we follow is that uh, we we actually hide all the fields of a class okay uh, from from getting inherited and uh, we usually let the methods be inherited by the derived classes again the, there is really no rule of thumb as i said uh, this is a general idea we usually start the designing using these things in mind that uh, in general i will hide all my fields and i will let all the methods go to the inherited class the inherited class can use it as it is as it as it wants um, but of course th there will be certain cases where i would want a particular field also to be shared with my derived class so it's not really a rule but uh, if you choose to do something otherwise if you choose to uh, let a particular field for example uh, be inherited by the derived classes or hide a particular function a method from the derived class just make sure you convince yourself that that uh, you are doing it purposefully and that uh, uh, that there is a rationale for doing that it's okay and uh, all the object oriented programming languages at least the ones that i know have a way to uh, decide the visibility of each member you can individually decide for each field as well as method whether it should be allowed uh, whether it should be accessible to the derived class or not now there's just one more thing that you need, we'll discuss today and that is the overall concept of overriding now uh, when, whenever i said extending the the behavior of a class what exactly did i mean right so what you really do is you actually let us say you inherited some members from uh, uh, from from your from the base class the derived class inherited some members from the base class now fields as i said okay they are they are just uh, uh, elements to capture data but methods are basically behaviors right they they change state from one one state to another so uh, there is a concept of redefining a method 
a method that was already defined in the base class now in the derived class um, I want to do something else okay the behavior I want to ex either extend the behavior or modify the behavior and that is why I said right in, in some cases I might even want uh, to hide a method from my derived class if I do not want a particular behavior to be modified but anyhow, uh, if, if let us say my, my derived class has access to all the uh, methods that, uh, that were given by the base class and my derived class wishes to change the definitions of certain methods that it has inherited, the, the, there is a concept of overriding, right? And what does this mean? When you override a particular method, what really happens is uh, the definition that is provided for it in the base class given that there is a definition because in some cases uh, uh, it is possible to simply create a method uh, within the base class without providing a body without providing a definition okay you just give the declaration such methods are known as abstract methods or in c++ terminology they are also called as pure virtual functions and uh, <coughs> the moment you actually have a pure virtual function one or more pure virtual functions in a class um, you cannot instantiate this class why because you understand that what if I want to invoke that method uh, using the object of this class there is no definition for it right so so I cannot invoke that method so the way in which object oriented method um, programming languages restrict you from uh, calling a method whose definition is currently not available is by disallowing you to create an object of that particular type right so uh, if you have a class which is abstract and when will this class be abstract if you if it has at least one pure virtual function in that case c plus um, and and most of the programming languages that i know uh, object oriented programming language will not allow you to create an object of this class these classes are essentially meant just for inheritance right so uh, many a times you will see uh, classes that are there whose objects cannot be created but these classes are supposed to be inherited into some derived classes in the derived class you are supposed to provide the definition of those virtual functions okay those, those pure virtual functions and then you can create objects of those derived classes don't worry about overriding we will actually look at overriding in detail this was just to give you an idea of how we actually modify or extend the behavior when we inherit something from a base class okay so uh, the same cricket example uh, i have now basically added one more class in the hierarchy called limited overs cricket matches right so uh, there are two types of cricket matches uh, test matches are considered to be uh, matches where the overs are not limited per innings whereas in odis t20s and even in this new format called t10 uh, the number of overs per innings is fixed uh, so i've just added like one uh, hierarchy one class in the hierarchy here limited overs cricket match and i'm saying that this class is essentially an abstract class why because um, limited overs cricket match doesn't really make any sense uh, it has to be one of these three types it could be three t10 t20 or odi okay so the 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 opposite of an abstract class is an is a concrete class so the three concrete types of limited over cricket matches are t10 t20 or odis so you cannot create an object of limited over cricket match but let us say uh, you can add some method to it okay which which could probably be a pure virtual method and then you can actually um, extend this class and provide a definition for this method so so in case of t10 um, this actually sh it should not be void it should be integer here okay so in case of t10 um, this get max overs uh, will will return 10 for you in case of odis it will return 50 in case of uh, t20s it will return 20 something like this right so the idea is um, many a times you might need an abstract class in between in the hierarchy the job of the abstract class is just to have uh, some properties collected at one place which can be inherited by uh, derived classes and these derived classes as i said are actually in general concrete and uh, uh, you know you can create their objects um, there is some homework have a look at the homework um, we'll see when we can start with the a classroom mode where you can ask me some doubts but for now please following the keep on reading these lectures and uh, keep discussing it amongst yourself thank you bye